Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's Castle Report. This is Friday, the 15th day of March of the year of our Lord, 2024. I will be talking about the dark and angry state of the Union speech delivered by President Joe Biden last week. I'll point out there was no optimism in the speech, no hope for the future of America. The entire premise of the speech built on lies stacked on top of other lies. A lot of things are happening in the world right now that we could be talking about, such as the fourth anniversary of 15 days to stop the spread. Remember that, folks? That's tomorrow, the fourth anniversary. That is another lie for which honorable scientists, honorable doctors are still being persecuted. The 2024 presidential election seems set now since Joe Biden and Donald Trump seem to be assured of a rematch. Elections are being held this year in at least 64 countries with about 50% of the world's people. They're scheduled to vote in those elections this year. Those topics would all make good subjects for this report, but only one election is part of this speech. One election except our own, of course. The most important election outside of our own is being held in Russia this very weekend. Putin, Vladimir Putin, will win by a large margin. That makes the election a sham, according to the American press. However, Putin is very popular in Russia right now. His election by a wide margin does not therefore mean it's a sham. His policies have produced high growth for Russia, low unemployment, inflation lower than ours. His finding alternate currencies to take the BRICS nations outside the dollar system seems to be resonating with a lot of the world's people. The world is changing. People look for leadership and some example of moral authority in Argentina, for example. The election of Javier Malay was in December. But his policies are being felt right now. When he took office, the inflation rate was 143%. The Argentine currency had collapsed. The people were desperate for an answer. 40% of them lived in poverty. He implemented a radical policy based on reality instead of being based on debt, which leads to default repeatedly. He cut government spending by 50%, eliminated many departments and Government subsidies, he stabilized the currency. He has already eliminated the massive deficit. When the Argentine legislature will not support his ideas, he goes to the provincial governors and asks for their support and local support. It seems to be working. I mentioned the Argentine election just to show that despite our troubles, we can still succeed if the people will allow the success. They will demand it. Here in America, the president tells us that his political opponent is the equivalent of Adolf Hitler. The president and his Department of Justice are currently effecting a campaign of lawfare against that opponent. He always refers to as his predecessor. I suppose it's because their Russia gate hoax of 2016 to 2020 has not worked so well and need a new hoax now. Speaking of Russia, the leader of that country is also Hitler, according to the president. Putin is going to tear through Ukraine, he says. He won't stop there, no, unless America sends tens of billions more in money and weapons to Ukraine. The evil Putin will roll up all of Europe and reinstate the Soviet Union. That's all just complete nonsense and total fantasy, not a word of truth in it. But apparently this man and the people who write his speeches expect us to believe it, and unfortunately many people do. He got rousing applause with each lie he told as if the State of the Union speech was a sporting event. I suppose Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi set the tone for that sporting event when she made a show of tearing up Donald Trump's transcript while he was delivering his own State of the Union speech. No sense of decorum or dignity seems to be left in this Congress or President. Tiny Ukraine, he tells us, tiny Ukraine can defeat massive Russia of course, if we Americans are willing to continually add to our children's debt load and make interest payments to continue forever, we Americans are supposed to deliver perhaps 30% of our combined labor for this man's fantasy support for the American arms industry. Speaking of the arms industry, let me stop criticizing the speech for a moment and tell you why this world seems to be at war and in chaos all the time. I know it sounds bizarre, folks, because it is. But the cause is fake money, resulting in an empire not subject to reality. Governments typically control their militaries with money. 
The money available allows them to keep the military and its millions of soldiers and supporting casts on a short lease. If you can't afford to finance regime change wars all over the planet, there are no regime change wars. The planet can remain somewhat stable. With the removal of the dollar's ties to gold as a limiting and stabilizing factor, money was no longer available strictly in limited quantities based on the labor of the American people. The government could now simply print as much as it wanted in unlimited quantities. For example, the revenue from taxes in 2023 was $4.1 trillion. The president's proposed budget for this year is $7.3 trillion. There is no longer any limit on the buying of votes to retain power or the spreading of chaos and war around this earth. Fake money lets the Pentagon off the leash that civilian authorities are supposed to keep a tight grip on. Pentagon budgets continually increase, especially so after the Soviet collapse in 1991, so there is always plenty of money to spread around to Congress. Military officers spend their careers in close working relationships with defense contractors, then go on to lucrative jobs. In the defense industry, after retirement, the defense industry is made up of many powerful groups who want more power. They must be restrained by reality or they will get that power. My point is this, folks, and that is that the wars across the world always have an American thumbprint on them because there is no limit to how much money can be made available to fund them. No regime change in Ukraine in 2014 means no war in 2020. No billions in U.S. aid would mean a very short war. We certainly can't have that. Now can we? No billions in aid to Israel means a very short war in Gaza, but Washington would rather posture and fence it, trying to appease those who support both Israel and those who support the Palestinians at the same time. Reality-based real money would limit government spending. Take a kid into a candy store. Tell him there's no limit to what he can buy, no limit to what he can eat. See what happens. On a national scale, what happens is that a lot of rat holes get stuffed with fake money. The biggest rat hole in this world is the defense industry. What can keep the coming catastrophe away from us for a while longer? Nothing, I'm afraid, because of the way the system works today. There are supposed to be built-in checks and balances, but they've all been removed. Congress, bought and paid for by military contributions and the ever-present dire consequences, dire international threats and international enemies, votes for one increase after another each year. It builds and gets worse. Politicians acting more and more like prostitutes must outdo each other by being strong on defense. They would not dare encourage diplomacy with Russia, China, the rest, because they would appear weak. Besides, that's not what all those campaign contributions are supposed to accomplish. Well, folks, thanks for allowing me to rant for a moment. Now back to the speech. January 6th, the president tells us, it was the greatest threat to democracy since the Civil War once again, we now know that reality is somewhat different, but despite all the evidence of corruption, he tells these lies as if he expects them to be believed. We know that Liz Cheney on the Nancy Pelosi committee of January 6th withheld exonerating evidence and altered that evidence to make it appear different. We know that Kamala Harris, Cheney, Pelosi, and the rest colluded with Fannie Willis down in Atlanta and other corrupt DOJ officials to bring fabricated charges and indictments against their political opponent, Donald Trump. The corruption at the very heart of the Department of Justice, the FBI, the rest is all justified, of course, because Donald Trump is really Hitler. They talk constantly about Trump being a threat to democracy and how he wants to be a dictator. They collude at the same time in dark cabal to prevent the democratic process from taking place by bringing false charges based on a stream of lies against a per person they apparently think might just be the choice of most Americans. The people see Trump as their champion because he seems to be a victim of the corruption and is therefore opposed to it. The people are tired of all this corruption, all the fake government, although they may not completely understand it, they're tired of it. With each fake assault, Trump gets stronger. The vaccine saved us from COVID. Now we have recovered from the lockdown, the fourth anniversary of which is tomorrow. That is so obviously a complete lie. 
that it is, should be obvious to any rational human being that vaccines which did not prevent the virus, which they were supposedly designed to prevent, did not stop the spread of the virus. Somehow they saved us from COVID. That pack of lies proves the premise that some people will believe any lie that is told to them if it comes from an authority figure. We've come back from COVID, the president said. Now our economy is the envy of the world. Here's another one from the president, delivered via the State of the Union address. The border crisis has been caused by Republicans, especially his predecessor. Who knew? Who knew it was Donald Trump who took down all the border barriers? Who knew it was Donald Trump who ordered the Border Patrol to assist illegal immigrants into the country? Who knew that it was Donald Trump's policies which allowed the illegal migrant into the country who murdered Lincoln Riley. By the way, upon embarrassing nagging by Marjorie Taylor Greene, the president did mention Lincoln's name, although he got it wrong, called her Lincoln. That would not be so terrible, except that Lincoln Riley is the head coach of the University of Southern California football team. Anyway, folks, we shouldn't worry about crime because it's plummeting. If you think otherwise, you must not be paying attention, perhaps, you are just somebody who has been carjacked, burglarized, a victim of armed robbery, or perhaps just murdered. The governor of New York apparently believes crime is a problem because she just sent 750 National Guard troops to patrol the New York City subways along with 250 state troopers. Nothing says welcome to New York like a uniformed soldier with a battle rifle saying, open your backpack. Remember to be of good cheer because during the next four years, this very bright, very energetic, very alert president will solve the climate crisis. Any problems with crime, the border crisis, impose a set of fair taxes on people he deems to have more money than he does in gun violence. And yes, yes, he's a president for all Americans. There is no effort to divide us in his heart. In conclusion, folks. What would have happened if President Biden had just told the truth to Congress and the American people? What if he said, look, folks, our situation is rather desperate right now, but we still have a little time to at least begin recovery. You've got to stop spending more than you make the same way American families are expected to do. We have set a terrible example for all those families, and that is why their household debt is now at a record $17.3 trillion dollars. It's because our official admitted to debt is over $34 trillion. It was $5 trillion under George W. Bush, but now it exceeds $34 trillion. Very soon, the interest payments will exceed income, and we will have to borrow the interest, which will accelerate our free fall to warp speed. We will be on a rail out of town, folks. I'm telling you, I point you to Argentina as an example of what can be done when one has the courage and determination to do it. He could have gone on to say... I don't represent special interest or the donor class anymore. I represent the general welfare of the nation. The budget hasn't been balanced in half a century, except for three years under Clinton. Yes, yes, he slighted the Social Security Trust Fund to do it, but we have looted that fund far worse than he ever did. Now there is no fund. So my point is, folks, we've got to stop. We are going to do that right now. My poll numbers are at an all-time low. I take that to mean the American people are getting wise to all the lies I've been telling them. So it's time to change. Send me a balanced budget and I will sign it. Do not send me anything that is not balanced because we are starting the long road back to sanity right now. Finally, folks, if he told the truth just once in his life, it might cause paralysis. I don't know but it certainly would cause screams of outrage among the special interest and the donor class. The people would rally behind him, though, if he just told the truth. At least that's the way I see it. Till next time, folks, this is Daryl Castle. Thanks for listening.